Hi, in this video I'll quickly show you how to find the optimum cost pruning parameter for a decision tree. Okay, so first we're getting our imports, which is matplotlib, sklearn.tree, so we're getting in our decision tree regressor, pandas, numpy, graphwiz, which is for our display, and then uh, the pre-processing is for pre-processing. We load the data up, which is our sample uh, regression data set. Um, it has four features, Indian economic condition, global market, Reserve Bank support, and a bias sentiment. And our target variable, which is, this is a regression problem, is, is the number of stocks down in percentage. So we've loaded them up from our PD. Following that, we will actually assign X and Y variable to be our features that we want to do. So there are four features that we're going to be modeling for X, and Y is our target, which is the number of stocks down. We're also going to be converting these categorical values into numerical values, which is what we do in the subsequent step, where first we group all the categorical values within our data set. Then we use a label encoder, basically, to fit on the categorical values, following which we do a transformation, and then we create a new data frame, which is extrain data frame, for us to store the encoded values for our features. So if you see here, this is X-Train now, it has no more categorical values, but everything is numeric only. And this is a prerequisite if you're going to be using SQLearn. Then we're visualizing the mapping here, which is what, what was the categorical value and what is the encoded number. Okay, so now let's quickly build our addition tree model. So at this stage, we're going to be declaring a addition tree regressor with no hyperparameter constraint. So you basically are letting the hyperparameters not be chosen, but be default. And that also means, by default, the fit function will try to overfit to your training data. So we are also instantiating and putting it into our variable CLF. Following that, I call the CLF.fit. So I'm fitting into my training data, X train and Y train. And thus, this model, I'm expecting it to be overfit. Okay, so now this video is on how to find the right alpha levels, which is nothing but the pruning levels. For you to do that, for you to identify that for your own data, there are really simple framework has been proposed by SQLearn, and this framework basically needs you to call this function, which is cost complexity pruning path, and then you will pass in your X train and Y train. And what this function basically does is it returns you all possible paths for which the cost uh, alpha parameters are decided along with it the impurity score or the total amount of errors in that tree okay so what this function returns you is a path variable but the actual path variable is containing two informations which is pair of information one is the the alphas and al and the other one is the impurity or the total errors in that model. Now what we are doing is we are extracting that information and we are plotting it with matplotlib and when you plot it for this sample data that I've shown you then this is a sort of ch chart you're going to be getting. And I would recommend you guys take a look at this chart and then start questioning where my alpha values are actually higher at the same time for an acceptable amount of impurity or acceptable amount of errors. So this is normalized set of errors. So I'm having about 40% errors at a level of where I have my effective alpha to be 0.13. But for some value of 0 0.10, I'm having an effective uh, implied total errors to be something like 0 0.35. So understanding this dynamics is very important and we would have to go through it right from the start of a very early phase of alpha, which is going to give me much less error. So for example, when I look at the alphas here, there is very little error, but we also must know one thing. This is this place of overfit, okay? So the place of overfit is this, where we have not done any hyperparameter tuning and our effective alpha, which indicates how I'm pruning the tree is also zero. So what we ideally need is a territory of an alpha, which is somewhere in the middle, which is not in these extreme values, but somewhere in the middle, so that we are confident that we have chosen an alpha, which is definitely pruning the tree and thus is avoiding the overfit, but at the same time is keeping the number of total errors in our model, in, in, a, in our model 
limited to a certain level okay so that's what this is going on so in my case I have chosen a value of 0 0.1 and because I've scaled them earlier with a hundred I am going to choose an alpha level after adjusting for the scale my alpha level comes to 0 0.01 0 0.001 now next time I'm building in my regression tree I'm actually having my uh, random state and this time I'm having a CCP alpha to be the value I've chosen knowing that for this particular example I will be expecting an error of approximately about 0.3 okay then following that you will do a fit for your model you export your model with GraphWiz and you will be plotting your model so in my case I've plotted the model after adjusting for the dot data this is something I explained earlier in a different video why I do that and if you haven't checked that out take a look at it because this transformation helps me see output that will not be in numbers uh, but more in terms of the categorical values okay an easier way for you to print your final output for the chart is also tree dot export text okay so this was a short video but quickly explaining the need and the importance for you to do alpha level parameter tuning for your addition trees very carefully because this is going to ensure you get a sweet spot not overfit not underfit and the right kind of a tree okay